Don Kaufman here, September 21st, 2020, doing the Theo Trade evening video. 15 minutes left to the cash close. The S&P futures down some 60 handles. Listen, persistent sell side activity in this marketplace. Are you worried yet? Meanwhile, we actually have divergence of the NASDAQ here in the latter portion of the day. Back to the upside. Let's start to break down some of the trade from today. But more appropriately, let's look forward, see what the marketplace has to offer. As I was saying, the S&Ps are down just about 60 handles, which is a fairly significant move. Uh, anytime you start to face about a 2% move, yeah, it's of course going to catch our attention. Nevertheless, the NASDAQ remains strong on a relative basis. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of different reasons, you know, news that the marketplace is reacting to today. I mean, I could sit here and talk, you know, pretty much about the uh, some of the financials. Obviously, the financials getting smoked on the trading day down some 3%. Oh, this specifically has to do with, oh, you know, money laundering and so forth, some fines headed their way. Uh, that's that's an old story. Listen, I think a lot of this has to do with some of the reports that have also come out regarding mortgages and delinquencies, much more than those, you know, suspicious, you know, transaction reports and so forth, the financials. I really think the financials are starting to react to the number of delinquencies and mortgages is nothing less gay okay, than uh, appalling at this point. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at 8 million insured mortgages. Uh, of which 17% of those are delinquent. That's really what the financials are starting to re like really react to today while you're seeing some of the sell side activity. You know, I want to bring this up on a year to date percentage. The financials still off about 23%, but just still way, listen, way off some of the lows from the Corona crash all the way back in uh, March, April, which had it down, you know, 42, 43%. So, all right. You've got the financials down, and lately, if the financials have down, uh, you've really had energy uh, get hit with it, and energy is off, well, even more than the financials. Again, what can we cite over here? Uh, it's oil, it's this, it's that. Listen, energy now down almost 50% on a year-to-date basis. Nothing to see over here. The unusual aspect, I think, of today's trade is that these are the sectors that have actually performed relatively well since this volatility is hit. When I say since this volatility hit, I'm talking now, well, we're about four weeks into the volatility. And uh, here we are, okay, up at the 3587. Uh, uh, again, you start looking specifically at the uh, the financials. Yeah, they've, you know, just kind of what, flattened out during this period, chopped out a lot of volatility that's impacting them, but the financials haven't gone anywhere. Um, you take a look over, of course, at uh, energy. Energy has just been a slow grind to the downside today, though, is uh, obviously a little bit of a standout, a 4% move. Again, 4% move is nothing less than kind of, you know, massive. It's spellbinding in terms of uh, some of the damage being done. But the one aspect that has performed well on a relative basis is got to be undoubtedly the monsters of tech. And the monsters of tech, uh, net, net, I mean, look at this. You got Microsoft's actually up on the trading day. Apple, just relentless, relentless bid over here. But let's back away for a second. These are the sectors that have been hit, hit the hardest. And what is, I think, a little worrisome as a trader to see. Well, there's a couple things on the screen that I'm actually going to show you here that are absolutely worrisome. And I'm not trying to uh, to come in here today and put the uh, the fear of the bear into you. Let the marketplace do that. But the selling is persistent. What I found interesting today is when they didn't smack Apple and they didn't go after, you know, Microsoft, which have had really rough. I mean, come on, people. When we talk about like oversold. Uh, this kind of exemplifies oversold. Again, Apple, you could call it a full-blown like bear market if it's just uh, Apple. Again, Apple tearing here into the close with 10 minutes to go. Uh, again, kind of continues to rip to the upside. So you have a couple of products that are in, you know, deep. On, on like a daily chart, these things would be considered deeply oversold. And I can actually display that if you guys are, you know, listen, I'm not a big market technician, but I do know how to pull up a chart here. This is a Theo trade like RSI Laguerre. It's a Laguerre time polynomial with fractal energy on it. Take a quick glance. The fractal energy is pretty much run out, but we're in heavily, heavily oversold territory here, specifically on the monsters of tech, neither here nor there. Because if I were to pull this up, again, like on a monthly, on a monthly, it's still considered and, you know, construed as wildly overbought. But again, the NASDAQ, no surprise here to see that actually go positive today. So I go back to the idea. Listen, I've talked about this extensively 
in recent weeks and recent months that there was no form of diversification left. And you're seeing just that today. And when I say there's no form of diversification left, listen, where are you going to go? You know, rotate back into to a Microsoft over here after it gotten whacked like that. Of course, you should expect you absolutely should expect that quintessential rip your face off rally. OK, and you're starting to see some of that and you can't be caught off guard or surprised to see follow through to the upside in terms of technology. But as I've reiterated time and again, OK, there are some major issues in this marketplace and I would fully anticipate sell side activity just to come raging back in. Maybe not immediately, maybe not necessarily tomorrow. OK, however, that sell side activity is going to be prevalent. Let me get to some of the the you know the basis of why we believe again we're going to see uh considerably more sell side activity and then this persistent selling that you actually should be a little bit worried about it all right again the s p here is uh day in and day out seeing again heavy sell side obviously putting uh together you know four fairly significant down days in a row i'm going to push that aside for just a moment one of the first things that is incredibly bothersome and i've been talking about volatility pretty much at nauseum but here you know this morning we open up and pretty much close volatility the exact same place the chart isn't going to display okay what you need to see in terms of volatility what you need to see in terms of volatility and i was talking about this a little bit in some of the recent videos okay it has to do with what we call you know, the contango and backwardation. For those of you who don't understand, complete geek, all right? So you don't have to speak geek, and I just froze my screen over here, which is fine. What I'm talking about is these 30-day volatility futures versus, for instance, back month volatility. Now, I get it. There's an election coming up, and the November volatility is probably a little bit amped up because of that election, as is December. But in the midst of some pretty good sell side activity, you would anticipate that short duration volatility would actually turn around and literally exceed. Okay. And when I say exceed, I'm talking about this, you know, 30. Okay. That 30, 31. So that 31, I would have expected this to shoot, for instance, to 33. Okay. And leave this November in the dust, you know, maybe in the neighborhood of, uh, you know, that 32 handle, just a little bit of an inversion. And again, I don't want to confuse people with the, you know, contango and backwardation. I don't want to geek out on you. I would have expected these to invert. And when I say I would have expected, what I'm telling you is because they have not inverted, that's still an extraordinarily dangerous marketplace. I mean, the marketplace right now is saying, eh, whatever. It's, it hasn't even really stretched its legs, if you would, to the downside. And that's why... You know, when you see persistent selling like this, forget about the NASDAQ, persistent selling, you know, you should be worried when you don't see volatility, okay, starting to invert, because that would be normal. That would say pressure's on, baby, like I can feel the burn. And yes, you can look at the VIX and you could probably make all kinds of comments about the VIX, like, but the VIX is just way off its highs of the trading session. In fact, the VIX is going to close, okay, dead towards the bottom. So once again, we actually see risk rear its ugly head and yet the volatility isn't just lackluster. It's going to close the, you know, the lows of the day. Then I'll actually cruise down to the VVIX. This is the volatility of the volatility index. Even the VVIX, all right, it's still under this 110 level. Now, the 110 level is what we call the VAMA zone. It's, and, and again, the VVIX, this is not a tradable product. This is just the volatility, again, of the volatility index. The reason I call anything over 110 the VAMA zone, anything over 110 is when it just gets people downright serious. That's when, you know, you know, put the head between the legs, get under your desk, rock back and forth because the crap is going to hit the fan. And the crazy part of this marketplace, and I don't mind saying this, you know, I've seen some heavy sell side activity and volatility not necessarily respond. OK, but this this is persistent. OK, persistent sell side activity and the volatility is not responding. And that's why it should put a little bit of that that fear into you. So tech is outperforming today. But again, it's massively oversold right to be expected volatility isn't reacting the way we expected it to the bonds the bonds are nowhere to be seen nobody's rushing into the bond product and being like save me save me you know there's there's no bond rush okay what else you got you want to look at the dollar 
Okay, the dollar exploded to the upside today. The dollar, if anything, looks more like the VIX than the VIX looks like the VIX. And this is something I would actually keep an eye on because if the dollar continues to rally, then you recognize that the dollar has actually become the safe haven product. Clearly today, it's not gold, all right? With gold in mind, again, has it been a good hedge as of late? Absolutely unequivocally, no. I, I never believe gold is a good hedge for the S&Ps turning down, but you could probably make a good argument for gold being a hedge against inflation. The issue at hand, okay, is that all of these risk parameters that we look at, right, when sell side activity hits, you would expect the bonds to rally. When sell side activity hits, you would expect the volatility to fly. When it hits, you should see, again, volatility invert. You should see the VVIX, you know, 115, 120, none of which is occurring. Yet, throughout the course of most of today, we see what? Correlation properties. One last point that I want to make, because I talked about this extensively also in the weekend video, and that's this, okay? If you take a look at the expected move, the expected move this week on the SPX, the last thing I said to you on the weekend video is I said, do not sell options this week. There was an $83, again, an $83 expected move. That's $83 higher, $83 lower. Yeah, we hit that today. For those of you who've ever, ever questioned expected move, take a chart and the SPX screws down all the way to the one day, one minute. Tell me, okay, that every trading firm out there isn't hedging off the edge of that expected move. Literally to a T, it is spot on, people. I'm telling you. You may see some rip your face off rallies in the days to come, but the sell side activity that we have seen thus far, okay, has left too much on the table, okay? In just the next couple of days, if we again have that rip your face off rally, when they do come back in to sell it, you got to actually check this box here at the 3211. We missed it today. And quite frankly, I'm a little surprised. 3211 right there. Again, when I say check the box, the 3211 is what we term a gravity point. Uh, again, pretty shocking that we bounced and missed that today. I would expect and anticipate that we are going to make a show of the 3211 at some point throughout the course of this week. No question about it. Again, that sell side activity is persistent. Believe we're probably overdue for a bounce, quite specifically inside of none other than the NASDAQ. Okay. But again, sell those rips use things like in out spreads to do so stay defined risk and you'll be fine out there thanks everybody for joining us here at theo trade have a wonderful evening bye bye